I work with, I work as an AD and I work with a lot of first time independent film directors and I wish they heard what Peter said about rehearsal and that freedom because a lot of them like to act out the scene for the actors when we, when we block and well, I just want to beat my head into the wall. Let them, let, let, them, let, them, let them try that with Sean Connery. <laughs> There, there is something that I always do, which is to spend as much time alone with the principal actors, and then they'll come up with manner. They'll, they'll they'll have mannerisms. They'll have things that they do, and you put that in the script, um, and it just you know it's who they are. It's much more behavioral, and and actually that first stuff that we we shot. Um, I, about a week before we started shooting, wrote that th all, all that dentist stuff, and, uh, and the studio hated it, and uh, they were insisting that I take it out, and I said, no. Um, you know, 25 years ago, I thought I was really talented. Um, <laughs> so, you, you know, you, you tend to fight for things, and sometimes you kind of, we were outside talking, and I said, you sometimes know the idea is good because they don't like it. And because they tend to like things that are within their own realm of experience. They've seen it before, they've heard it before. And if they haven't seen it before and they haven't heard it before, they don't like it, and cut off, and that's why it's good. Um, John Grice and Stephen Bauer wanted to be here tonight. They're working out of town. You talk about the, them and the rest of the supporting cast, like Jimmy Smith, Stuart Panagliano, uh, yeah, and I was I was hoping he'd be here, and you know that you know it was, it would be nice. Talk about but, casting them and then working with them and what that was like. I've never seen a good film that's bad in one area. Good films tend to be good, um, and the hallmark of a good film is is everybody who's on that screen interesting? Do they have some kind of texture to them? Um, and we've all seen films where small parts are played by dull people, and those films tend to be dull. Um, these are just some wonderful, talented actors who at that time in their lives didn't have a great deal of exposure. and. Um, they're wonderful. Uh, you know, I, I, all I can say is I feel uh, proud of how, you know, how they all turned out. And Darlene, do you have uh, any stories of working with any of them? Well, you know, it's, it's kind of, you, know, you, you kind of, if, if you're trying to do a track, you know, and you want to talk to somebody and you can't get them, you know, and that, that's kind of like when I did the things with breaking <laughs> you'll kill me but anyway you know it, it just it just has to come you if when you while you're thinking about it and talk you know in your own head and then you kind of open it up and it opens other others to hear what you're saying so um, I like to work that way and I think that that's the most fun <laughs> of anything and so uh, all, all the students that I've had um, have come really well. Really come to Not a lot of guys coming out. And as you, as you know, David Desio and all those people coming around, they know where to go. I tell them where to go. You know? So, uh, yeah, I really, I really enjoy that. That's the most fun that I have. I, I, I find if you if, if you have actors and you have the luxury of having a set and you have them hang out on a set like Rocky Bauer and and and, and uh, John we had built up the squad room and I I had them in there for about two three days just hanging around and smoking cigarettes and putting their feet up on desks and and, and after a while it wasn't a set it was just you just took their mannerisms and just did it. I, I, I made a film 
before that called Outland, and and we built this. No, oh, please, I, I, I didn't say it for that. It just it required it required a habitat. It required to build a place where people lived, and I had about 150 extras, maybe 200 extras, and I I, I begged and pleaded and was granted to have the extras for two solid days before we started shooting. Wow. And didn't do anything, just put them in there. And, and lunchtime, they took them out and fed them and then brought them back. <laughs> and the kind of behavior of people when they're really bored and kind of, they're no longer aware of their surroundings, there's a, there's a beauty to that. You know, I was an art student, and that's how you draw. You just, you watch people when they're at rest, not, not when they're like that. And I used to, I would sit there and just sketch them as when they couldn't see me. And the result worked. You know, it looked like people lived there. They even hung articles of clothing in certain strange ways. And I think the same thing is with actors. You let them hang out as much as possible together in the place where you're going to be, and they're going to just no longer be um, inspecting a place which is supposed to be where they live or work. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's... Yeah, no, they get natural yeah. with the set, and it becomes more organic. Yeah. You know, I, I actually, um, when that girl had to jump from the, the other mm -hmm. one, supposing mm -hmm. to be me, uh, was very dangerous, very dangerous. But she was so gifted, she just would go over that thing. I'm like, I don't want to go down there. I'm not going to that one. <laughs> but it was like, you know, it, she trusted it. She was also so strong. I remember her very well. Oh, yeah. Man. She was. She really, and I kept saying, just keep doing what yeah. you're doing, you know? Yeah. Hey, make me look good. <laughs> I didn't say that, but but she was great. She was terrific. And, and you know, people feel good when you give yeah. them even the smallest bit of something, they can make it even better. <coughs> so that's why when, even when I'm working, when I was working at UCF, um, they had to do everything. They had to do everything. And if you didn't do it, you're out. And then they wanted me to do the other because they didn't know how to do it. They didn't know how to do the other stuff with you know, all this singing and stuff like that. Um, and I and I felt like it's kind of you get somewhere, but not enough. And the students, a lot of times, you know, you really have to think about it. Okay, what's wrong with this? I'll call you, you know, for instance. And you say, I don't want to do that, you know? It could be the greatest thing you could do, you know? You could have, your, you know, things twist and move around. And as you do that, you know, give yourself the time, you know? Just being in your life, talking to people, or whatever it is you're, you're doing, let it bring into you. Bring, bring it back in. Does that work? Yeah, it kind of works good. Maybe we can get this going. So it's that kind of thing that um, helps the students understand what happens, you know, besides with the cameras and all those things like that. Um, and I think it's a really good thing to work on that a little bit. And um, they always, always come through. Um, occasionally I had to kick out two people, but I hated to do that. But they didn't want to do it. They just said, nah, nah, I don't want to do it. I don't think I'm getting this. You know, blah, blah, blah. I said, good, perfect, great, bye. You know, that's what you got to do. You know, you don't just sit there and say, see you later. But, you know, it's really, it's really important. I think also any man or woman who doesn't love actors will never be able to direct. You have to love actors, and you have to understand the courage it takes. Uh, I'm awed by the courage it takes. Um, so my, my, my stance is to be protective. However, it, it takes much more courage than I have to stand up 
I mean, if you really want to, if, if you really, if you don't believe it, if anybody doesn't believe it, ask them to come up here and just walk. Don't do anything else, just walk. And you'll see what self-conscious is. Um, so I'm just awed by it. I love it. I, I did one of these things with a whole bunch of director, writer, director, people in chairs in, in a movie theater. Uh, and it looked like the faculty of yeshiva. I mean, everybody had a beard, and they were all sitting there. And a couple of them were very pissed off people. And, and one of them said, you know, how he hated actors. You know, big, big pains in the ass. And um, I'd, I'd seen the gentleman's work, and, and, and it showed. But <laughs> I said to him, I said, if you want obedience, get a puppy. Um, you don't. You don't want obedient. You don't want obedient to anybody. You don't want obedient AD. You don't want to be. You don't. You know. You want someone to say, "Hey, shithead, it's five o'clock." Um, you want strong people around you. And if you don't have strong people around you, then you're the strongest. And if you're the strongest, you're in deep trouble. <laughs> now, Peter, something very unique about you is you're also a director of photography, and you shoot your own pictures. So I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the advantages of that, and are there any disadvantages? And also, do you operate as well? No, no, you don't. No, I don't think you can. I don't think you can really look at a performance through a flickering eyepiece. Um, and also, they're wonderful operators, and you know, so much better than I am. Um, I don't think there are any disadvantages. I think the, the the the. I think you actually have a very unfair advantage. She's not going to. Well, she's not going to want to admit it. However, any actor, I don't care who you are, you want to know that the person who is making that film is making them look good. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're an old man. You, you, you want the person who's making the film to make you look good. When you're directing the film, and actors also know that you are the person who is making them look good, you have a great advantage, and also I'm I'm, uh, I'm I'm never ever afraid to admit that I don't know something. Um, as a matter of fact, as I've gotten older, I've become an expert in all I don't know. Um, so many times, I will tell an actor when I've lit a scene. I'll put the stand in there, and I'll tell the actor, look through the eyepiece. And sometimes they'll, they'll treat it like it's radioactive. You know, it's, they're not used to looking through an eyepiece. I said, look, and the first thing they see is, she looks pretty, you know? That's, that, that light is nice. And then I go, okay, I'm stuck. I need you to get from here to there, and I don't know how to do it. Any actor will go, oh, I know. And then you, they'll do it, and then you follow them. Actors should not follow a camera. Cameras should follow actors.